On February 1st, 1979, Air France Flight 4721 landed in Tehran. On board were journalists, Imam Khomeini supporters, and Imam Khomeini himself. His arrival in Iran marked the beginning of the end for the protests which had been going on for well over a year. His arrival marked the end of the Shah's rule over Iran and the rule of the Pahlavi dynasty over Iran. More importantly, however, his arrival heralded the beginning of the Islamic Republic of Iran and the success of the Islamic Revolution 10 days later. The Islamic Revolution success is normally commemorated on February 11th, the date on which the Shah's appointed Prime Minister resigned and the government transitioned to one appointed by Imam Khomeini. It was not until a few months later when a referendum was held that Iran became the Islamic Republic of Iran and adopted the system of governance that we are familiar with today. Our program today, as I'm sure most of you know, is being held to commemorate this momentous, the momentous success of the revolution and to hopefully derive some lessons from it for ourselves. Our agenda for today will be as follows. From now until 7.30 or so, we'll be listening to various speakers, each of whom I'll try to do my best to introduce before their speeches, on topics such as uniting communities in light of the revolution and our responsibilities here in the West in light of the revolution. At 7.30, we'll be breaking to pray Isha Salah, inshallah, and for tea. We'll resume the program close to eight and we'll once again be listening to more speakers, watching some video clips and listening to some poetry as well. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce the first speaker for tonight, Sayyid Hassan Mushtaba. Sayyid Hassan Mushtaba is an old member of this community and he has been guiding us through various lectures, programs and classes. Please welcome him to the podium with a loud salawat. Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa bihi nasta'een wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Allahumma salam Allahumma salam Allahumma salam Allahumma salam Amma ba'a salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh All praise and glory belong to Allah the one who has given the system of guidance for the human potential to come out of their minds, of their hearts, and their soul. To gain an image, a body, a movement, a system, by which all of humanity has an equal and just opportunity to do the same. This system of guidance is what we refer to as Islam. When the first man arrived on this earth and planted a seed, the seed was to be nourished, watered, given the appropriate sunlight, facilitated the environment for its growth by the guides that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent and by their followers that watered that plant into a tree, sometimes with sufferings, sometimes with imprisonment, sometimes with blood. The Islamic Revolution is a continuation of the history as far back as a human being has been on the face of this earth. The history does not go back 40 years. It's just that after thousands of years, this tree gave the fruit that you and I and the rest of the world is benefiting from. The topic that I was given to me was the word miracle in there. Miracles are only performed by the prophets. And we generally use the term very lightly. So we decided that you can use the word miracle in there. Miracles are only performed by the prophets for the simple fact that it is a sign of their being on the righteous path, on the path of truth, 
as a representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the responsibility to guide, to let them know what is the dangers and to give the good tidings. Once the miracles are shown, the proof is done on the human beings that have seen. Then afterwards is the point of action and the point where a person can get to that point which might be a word that is foreign to you but I'm going to use it because in Arabic whenever you know I try to look for an equivalent translation of Ghaira I had always a hard time finding one Maybe the English dictionary does not have that. But one word that we can think about and possibly could mean is to have a God-centered ego. We generally use ego in all of the negative terms, never really use it in a positive one. Ego is the power which is directed either in the right way or the wrong way. Ego is that power that can defend the laws and the rules and the principles of justice. Or it can propagate the laws, the rules of injustice. Ego is that power that if a person has and it is centered around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that power can bring about a flood of light, a revolution that can encompass this whole world. Against this tree, or the system of guidance, man always made systems to either destroy this tree, cut down this tree, or to have no fruit come about from this tree. In all of the systems that man created by hand, uh, there's a few of them in history, you know better than me, you know, socialism, Marxism, capitalism, consumerism. I'm missing any other isms? Really? <coughs> Democraticism, no? You can't make that as a word. All of the systems that were made by man produced a self-centered ego. This self-centered ego that was produced by consumerism, materialism, socialism, Marxism, gave humanity an excuse to live in the state where we are at today. It gave humanity the excuse that you do not have to tap into that potential that Allah SWT has given to you. You do not have to bring it up. Just bury it. As far as my topic, if you wanted to know, I can just finish it in two sentences. The word miracle I'm not going to use, I'll bring the word, the fruit of the Islamic revolution was that the self-centered ego was defeated by God-centered ego. And how to unite ourselves together? It's also very simple. Let go of the self-centered ego and have that ego go around Allah SWT. If we do that, unity is the byproduct of it. The reason why maybe perhaps so far we haven't been able to unite with each other is because of our self-centered ego. We're still stuck in that circle where you and I are different, are separated. Because of our creed, because of our Ethnicity, because of our tongue, because of the color of our skin, because we are from Africa, or we're from Pakistan, or we're from Lebanon, or we're from... 
And even if we are from Pakistan, then we are from that particular, you know, either you're from Punjab or you're from Sindh and then from so forth. You know, you're from Karachi or you're from Faisalabad or you're from Lahore and from in Karachi, you're from Ancholi or Lahore, you're from Iqbal town and so forth and so forth. And then we think that magically one day we're all going to be united. That magic is not going to happen. It's sort of like a fantasy that we are in. We think that if we can just sit together and let's say talk about one topic about unity that after the conference is done we are all together, unified. But as long as each one of us is sitting in that chair with that self-centered ego, nothing's going to happen. If our power to defend justice, if our power to stand against injustice, if our power to be able to use our hearts to help humanity to achieve that potential that is guaranteed, that every one of us has it inside, if it's not centered around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not coming together. One of the traditions of the Holy Prophet, which is quite inspiring, he says that all of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah's family. And among you, whoever takes care of the family of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be the most loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning a servant. When Imam Khomeini Rahmatullah was, you know, addressed as Imam or Rahbar, he would always say that don't, you know, I'm not what you are saying, I'm a servant. His God-centered ego did not allow any selfishness to come about in his heart, his mind and his soul. But we, even if we don't have a title of Imam or Maulana, we would like to be called with some title. And if we continue on this way, unity is a far-fetched idea. So what is the solution? Solution is very actually simple. It's not very philosophical, it doesn't really require a big lecture. So get out of your illusion of separation. Understand that Allah SWT has made us from one nafs. He has given us the same power as everybody else. You have the same potential that I do. There's no difference. You have the same ego as I do. Uh, to recognize that you have an ego is the first step to actually make that ego go around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To deny it, to say that I do not have an ego, there's no beginning. The embodiment of self-centered ego was the image of Shah. In the time where that particular area of the world was a hub for people to come and satisfy their lowly desires. Out of that area, a person decided to let go of self and to utilize that power and potential to center it around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he became, one person became a nation. One person became a nation. And when people saw that, they joined in. And they also let go of their self-centeredness. And they utilized that power that was given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to defend justice, to stand against injustice, 
They utilized that and they came out on the streets. Can it happen here? What will be the fruit that we will get out of the revolution? If you want something for a moment, let go of your self-centered ego, look around to the potential that has been given to us by Allah SWT. Don't greet each other with the separation of our consciousness. Look at each other as you. The universal truth that everybody knows is treat others as you would like to be treated. We're actually, okay, I'll finish it on that because I was given a short amount of time and um, we we'll just ended on an experiment. Am I connected to you? You can answer, you don't have to just sit there. And you are, yeah, I'm connected to you. But in front of me is that podium and then after that is some air and then there is a few chairs where the brothers are sitting and then so forth and don't we look separate? Don't we look separate from the people that are in the back? Do, do I not look separate from you? Yeah? Yes? Yes or no? I do, right? Okay, but like, we're gonna, I'm going to show you that we're not actually separate. So, I am standing on a carpet that is a stage which is connected to the floor of the gym. The floor of the gym is connected to the carpet that your chairs are. The chairs are connected to the carpets and you are connected to the chairs. Are we separate? No? And then if you were to take that further, then this floor is also connected to the walls. The walls are connected to the parking lot outside. The parking lot is connected to the road outside. The road is connected to another road. That road leads to another road that ends up at an ocean and that ocean is connected to another land. And then that, that land has other roads that are connected and right now we are connected with Bajtizara. The graves of the martyrs, we are connected with them at the moment. The ones who gave the blood of theirs with sincerity for the sake of Allah SWT, having a God-centered ego to defend what was right. We're connected to them. You are connected to that grave that hosts the person who became a nation. You're connected to, you go further as far as you want to go. We're not separate. We just can't see. If you could see and hear, you would see and hear the cries of the children in Yemen and Bahrain. You would see the orphans extending their hand. You would see those individuals who live in a man-made prison in Palestine. You would be able to hear the cries of those mothers that have lost their children. You would be able to see and hear all of that and you are continuously connected to all of it. Yet we decide with that illusion of our own consciousness that we are separate. We're not separate. We will be held responsible on the Day of Judgment for every opportunity lost to help someone. If you want the Islamic Revolution to unite us, let go of the idea of being self-centered ego maniac.
Instead of self putting a house, a car, anything else that comes in so that our life can go around it, let go. In the center, bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have that power which exists in you and I as the potential of a human being to bring it out. And then you will see we're all successful if you go and walk that path. Imam Khomeini has shown us, the shohada have shown us that regardless of your environment where you are, no matter how self-centered ego maniacs are there who are going against their potential and their nature, doesn't matter. If we make Allah SWT as our center in every single part of this world, a light can come out that can illuminate as the revolution in Iran did. And it has far reached. When you see the sisters wearing hijab, that's part of the light of the inkala. When you are able to gather for Dua'i Kumail, that's the light of inkala. When you are, you know, our brothers would never, you know, look like a Muslim, for example. Before, it was like, okay, if you wanted to look like a Muslim, but it was not an obligation. When you see our youngsters deciding, committing that they're going to look like a Muslim, that's the light of Inkala. When you have the opportunity to read Dua'i Nutba, Dua'i Kumail, when all of these things are actually light of the revolution that was brought by the chain of all of those people who wanted humanity to come and get their potential out into action. In a way, if, if you like the Islamic revolution or you don't like the Islamic revolution, you are still benefiting from the shade of that tree. Whether you recognize that there can be one person, a righteous person who has a God-centered ego who can become that guide, that light that we all can follow, He's there. If you think that we've lost our dignity, the, the sign of our dignity is still there. The minimum you can do if you want to use the Islamic revolution to unite, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it. If you decide and you want to choose a leader, based on a self-centered ego, then stop choosing people that are cricketers, people who are corrupt individuals, people who have nothing to do with Islam, who are actually drinking the blood of the innocent, choosing them as our leaders. When you have the option of choosing someone who has God consciousness, We can come under a banner of a party, of a political party and choose someone as the person that you're going to talk about in politics and then when it comes to the leader of the revolution, uh, you, you know, we start arguing whether he can be a leader for the individuals that are here or in Iraq or can they, you know, is there only... If you want to become a nation, every one of us have to let go of that self centeredness Stop thinking that we're separate. We're together. Whether you like the pictures of the shahada or you don't, whether you are with the Islamic revolution or you're not, the light has reached you. And inshallah, it is a continuation where all of the world is going to have the opportunity to rise up with the God-given potential that is there inside of have the facilitation of the environment in which human beings can reach the heights that you and I can achieve. By the grace of the Imam of the time, may he introduce himself as soon as possible and that we can see that day when humanity reaches its potential and the fruit of that tree that was planted by the first human on the face of this earth is given and all of the systems that have failed to produce any sort of justice slowly, slowly diminish away and that system of guidance which can give us God consciousness and a centered 
individual who is in all of their aspects of life always thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may that day come as soon as possible Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa al-Asr Inna l-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amanu salihat wa tawasur bil-haq wa tawasur Allah Allah Allah